Hello and welcome to Getting Started with Business Messages. This is Adam, your friendly business communications developer relations engineer, and in today's video, I'll show you everything you need to do to set up a conversational agent on business messages. Let's start with a 10,000 foot view. Business Messages connects a business and an interested consumer. As a consumer is searching for a business on Google, they may see a chat button tied to a store location, a brand, or when they're trying to contact a company. The chat button appears to the consumer in a timely and helpful manner as they are going about their search, getting them into an engaging conversation with the business when they need it. When they tap on message, it opens a conversational surface with the business and when they begin the conversation, their message flows through the business messages platform to a messaging provider or the brand itself. The platform can be used to help drive sales, build customer loyalty, and improve customer satisfaction through assistive experiences and rich features within the conversation. The messaging provider's web application exposes a web hook endpoint, and this webhook is where you receive messages from the business messages platform as JSON payloads. The web application should respond to the messages received from the users, and these responses go through the business messages platform where we manage the delivery of that message to all users. In this video, I'll help you get set up as a messaging provider so you can have conversations on business messages. Don't have a webhook? Don't sweat it. In this video, we'll deploy a sample application we've created to make this easy for you. Don't have your own infrastructure? No problem. We'll use Google Cloud and deploy to Google App Engine, and it will be frictionless. So we are going to do a number of things today. We will create a Google Cloud project, register with business messages, wait for and receive the confirmation email, enable the APIs in Google Cloud, deploy a web application to receive messages, head over to the Business Communications Developer Console and set the webhook URL, create a brand and an agent, then have our first conversation. Piece of cake, really. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer. First, we must log into the Google Cloud Platform to create a GCP project. Navigate over to this URL and select the dropdown, and then click New Project. Set a name of your liking and click Create. GCP takes a moment to complete this request, but when it is done, you'll be prompted with this notification where you can click Select Project. Once you click that, you'll be presented with your project information. We'll note the GCP project number and the project ID for later. To register with business messages, head over to the developer website. Navigate to the developer docs. On the left-hand menu, select Register with business messages. In Register with business messages, you'll find a form as you scroll down the page, Let's complete it together. In the email field, I'll specify my email. Part of our terms of services is that we require corporate emails tied to an employer's domain. Personal emails like at gmail.com are not allowed. Partner name is the name of my organization. I'll use bizcoms, which is short for business communications. The GCP project number is the project number of the Google Cloud project I just created. I'll just copy and paste that from my note. The reporting email is the account where you want to receive quality monitoring metrics. For example, you will receive customer satisfaction reports of how conversational experiences went for customers. I'll just specify my own email. We are going to skip the webhook URL field in this form, but we will add it when we are inside of the Business Communications Developer Console. If you have colleagues that you'd like to give access to the Business Communications Developer Console, access to the Business Messages API, or invitations to our bi-weekly office hours, this is the place to specify those emails. You can also email bm-support at google.com at a later time to add your colleagues. Finally, open and read the Terms of Service for Business Messages. When you are ready, come back to the form, click the checkbox to agree, and submit it for registration. At this point, we are done with the prerequisite setup. We can step away from the computer for a short time and wait for the support team to confirm your registration. Now is a good time to pause and take a break. Come back to the video when you've received confirmation from the support team. You should expect to hear back within one business day. This is the partner registration confirmation email that our support team will send you. It contains all of the information that allows you to integrate with Business Messages API and much more. With this email in your inbox, we are ready to proceed. 
Let's head back to the Google Cloud Console to enable the APIs. Make sure the correct project has been selected if you have multiple GCP projects. We'll need the Business Communications API and the Business Messages API. Additionally, we'll need the Cloud Build API to build our application for Google App Engine. Click on the hamburger menu on the top left and scroll down to APIs and Services and click Library. Let's first enable the Cloud Build API to allow us to use Google App Engine. Search for Cloud Build API, select it and select Enable. This prompts a modal to come up on screen to select a billing account if you haven't already set one. We need to enable two more APIs for use with business messages, the Business Communications API and the Business Messages API. So you might be asking, why two APIs? Within Business Communications, we actually have a whole suite of products. If you haven't already, check out Verified SMS, RCS Business Messaging, and Verified Calls. I'd recommend it as they are really cool technologies built on well-tested communication protocols. The Business Communications API allows you to interact with business communication entities such as brands, agents, and locations for use across our product suite to make your life easier. The Business Messages API lets you send mes messages over the Business Messages platform. To enable these APIs, search for Business Messages, select Business Messages API, and click Enable. And when it completes, go back and do the same for the Business Communications API. Let's deploy a web application that can receive and respond to messages over business messages. We will be deploying to the Google Cloud Platform using Google App Engine to run our application. The application exposes an endpoint that we call your webhook, and this is where Business Messages sends conversational data. Head over to the Business Communications GitHub page. There, we have a variety of samples that we maintain regularly to ensure we are showcasing the latest features introduced on business messages. We are going to deploy one of the EchoBot samples. We have these samples written in Python, Node.js, and Java. They are all mostly the same with minor differences. For this video, we are going to deploy the Node.js sample. Grab the git clone link and then head over to our terminal. Let's create a new folder on our machine, navigate to it, and clone the GitHub sample. We'll be deploying the full sample, so navigate to full sample within the Git repo. Now that this is done, it's a good time to ensure we have gcloud installed. gcloud is a binary that lets us communicate with GCP and deploy applications right here from our command line. You can check if you have gcloud installed just by issuing the command gcloud in the terminal. This should be your expected output. You can also check the version of gcloud by issuing this command. If you don't have gcloud installed, you can check out the gcloud SDK page for installation instructions. With gcloud installed, let's authenticate so we can communicate with our GCP account. Now we should set our project configuration. My GCP project name that I registered with business messages is business-messages-intro. So I'll issue this command. Great. Now that we are ready, we can go ahead and deploy our application. As this is our first deployment, we will be prompted with a few configuration details. The first is to select a region where you want your App Engine application to run. As I'm in US Region West, I'll select one of the US-West servers. It then presents us with the details about the GCP project set and to confirm what we are seeing is correct. Everything looks right here, so I'll proceed by typing Y and hitting Enter. All right, so our infrastructure is set up and we are super close to having our first conversation. Bear with me now, this is the final stretch. Note down the URL endpoint that has been set after deploying the EchoBot sample. The EchoBot application encodes a URL endpoint at slash callback. So by appending the slash callback to the end of the URL, we have our webhook endpoint. We'll need this for the next step. Navigate to the Business Communications Developer Console. This is the developer console. We are going to use it to set your account webhook URL and create brands and agents. Everything you can do in the console can also be done directly using the Business Communications API. Let's get on to updating our webhook URL first. In the top right corner, click the gear icon to enter the settings. Make sure you see reference to the GCP project you've created for this tutorial. 
we can set our project webhook here. Set the webhook endpoint to the URL that we made note of earlier. This configuration ensures that the business messages platform will send messages over to that webhook URL until an appropriate response is received. Let's head back into the console's main view and create our first agent. An agent is the entity that a user interacts with and is the representation of a brand within business messages. The configuration details you make on the agent is what a user ultimately sees when interacting with your agent on business messages. Once you are happy with your brand and agent name, you can go ahead and click Create Agent. Once the agent has been created, you can click on the agent to view the agent overview. Here, there are some key identifiers specific to your agent. You'll also find the agent test URLs and verification status. You'll need to send the agent test URLs to your mobile device for testing. You can manually create an email, send it via text, or use the send feature provided in the console. I'll make use of the send feature, which will send the test URLs to the currently signed in email. Then on your mobile device, open up the email and tap the URL for the appropriate platform and invoke the conversational surface to have your first conversation. Check it out. We are interacting with an EchoBot that we deployed on Google App Engine on the Business Messages platform. The EchoBot that is deployed can showcase some of the rich features on the platform. For example, if I send the phrase card, I'll get a rich card. Similarly, if I send the message carousel, I'll see a carousel of cards. And lastly, if I send the message chips, I'll get a list of suggestion chips that can help guide the conversation. These features can be added as conversation starters through the console or the APIs to guide the user into the conversation. As you'd expect from an echo bot, the bot will also echo messages that you send it. There are tons of use cases with applications built on messaging alone, and a lot can be done with business messages today. Check out some of our samples on GitHub. We also have code labs that walk you through the use of our APIs to build more complex experiences. And for more detailed information about the business messages platform, I recommend checking out the developer website and the business messages homepage. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you are able to deploy an agent smoothly. And if you need support, please reach out to bm-support at google.com with your inquiry. I'm looking forward to catching you next time.